Good morning. It's raining. Bummer. I think we're up to about a quarter of an inch since last night. Not a ton, but it's still raining. Well, since it's going to be a rainy day, we've got to figure out what we're going to do. I, mean, I need to run some errands and make a couple of shopping trips, so I'm going to run to town here this morning and mess around with that kind of stuff. Um, but we might work out here in the seed warehouse a little bit this afternoon. So uh, Saturday I had some time, and well, I'll put a little more insulation up there, starting to roll that fiberglass out. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and just do a bunch of that now, try and get it, the roof a little more insulated. I was... I was nervous about insulating it and not getting the steel put up under it real fast like we did over here. Um, but I had four runs that were the first ones I put up there and they're hanging up just fine. So I think we can go ahead and just put all of that stuff up. And then as we get time here this winter, um, we'll keep hanging some steel and stuff. And so, yeah, I don't know. I, I've been looking at this project, trying to figure out the best way to do some stuff. And um, well, it's going to take a while, but let me show you what I'm thinking here. So I've got these six lights that I put in here back when I first put the barn up, and they're fine, but I could really use some more light, especially over there by the treater and when we're doing stuff. Um, and I ran the conduit up there. Can you see kind of along that one board, but it's up in the uh, what will be covered up by the steel. And I don't really want to bury my plugs and conduit up there. And so I figure like I have to redo all of that stuff. And so uh, my plan here is to do, like we've got the bottom run of steel put on this side. I want to do the bottom run of steel on this side. And I'm actually going to put some new lights in. We're going to run um, four rows of six lights instead of two rows of three lights. And we're going to change it in here dramatically. Uh, but we'll put one in the center of each one of these bays. And then we'll do two rows on each side. So once I get well, I can't over here, but once I get the steel put up on the roof on the bottom on the other side there, um, we can start running our conduit and hanging our lights underneath the new steel so that when I have to take these ones down, we still have some light in here until I can get the um, insulation up, the steel up, and then hang another two rows of lights in the center uh, or closer to the center. So uh, that's kind of my, my plan. So really, I could start doing conduit and running another row of lights over there anytime, but at the same time, we need to get the steel and insulation up and all that fun stuff. So, um, yeah, we're going to work on that a little bit this afternoon, try and get some more of this insulation hung up in here, maybe finish down this side here, something like that. Oh, yeah, then there's this. I did kind of sort of fix it. Um, if you'll remember this from a couple of weeks ago, this tire here likes to fall off because the snap ring in there, the groove was bad. And so it would just push out. So uh, I got lots and lots of suggestions on how to fix it. Some of them were practical or would potentially work. Some of them would not. Um, probably the most common suggestion was to drill a hole and put a cotter pin in. And um, that's probably what we'll do if we still have trouble. The problem is that it's in this recessed hole, right? So you can't get a real big cotter pin in there. It would have to be a pretty small one or a short one in order to fit and get it in just right, uh, which is why they use the snap ring in there. Um, trying to drill the end of it and tap it so I can thread a bolt in there is probably not real practical because I don't think I can do that straight enough and good enough to make it um, work. I thought about trying to um, tap threads on the outside of that shaft to just screw a nut on. I don't know that that would work real well either because we don't have a ton of threads. We wouldn't be able to get a lock nut on far enough to actually lock without smashing everything. Um, so what I did to fix it for now was I took my Dremel with a little, um, cutoff wheel, like grinder on it. And we kind of remade our snap ring groove. Now that snap ring is a touch big and I might need to find one a size smaller to fit on there, but I was able to successfully sweep over half the floor and it did not fall off. So that's a positive. It's not perfect, but it at least works again. So if it falls off or I have more trouble, um, like I said, I'll either get a smaller snap ring. We'll try that. Probably it'll be the first thing, but then we'll try and drill it and put a, a pin of some sort through it so that it can't work its way off. But anyway, I'm going to head to town. We'll see you guys this afternoon. All right. I made it back. Look, we're up at the rain field here. Um, one of the things that I wanted to do and things that I needed to buy, um, is, so we, 
got a big air compressor and blew this machine out, so there's not really any water left in that or nothing, not enough to be concerned about. And we blew out this pipe underground, but there might still be a little bit of water in there because I don't think we were able to just blow it all out. Um, and while it's buried and shouldn't freeze, at least out in the middle of it, there's a six inch like tube of cold water direct to the ground level there and if there is some water in there it could potentially freeze. So I want to try and prevent that. So I bought a pump, a little cheapy transfer pump. This was a pretty good excuse to go buy a Milwaukee one M18 transfer pump but they are $225. This was $50. I'm like I got a power plug literally within cords length of this pump right there. I can't justify four times the cost so this is what we got I took our air fitting off of there which we don't need on there anymore anyway shoved that hose down as far as it wants to go so we got to be right at the bend at the underground there hooked up our pump we had to do a little creative wiring to get this outlet to work because it's attached to a relay Let's see if it's got enough to pull to suck any water out of there there might not even be any water heck I don't even really know Okay, well, that may have been a waste of time. Um, I never got any water. I didn't want to let the pump run too long because it's just going to wreck the pump, right? Um, so I, I, I ran it for a second. It didn't get anything. and I didn't like the way it sounded, so we shut it off. And then I tried to um, siphon some water out, basically suck through the hose. And um, got a mouthful of dust and dirt. I think our pipe is dry. <laughs> Drier than I would have liked. Or not. No, it's good. It's good. Drier than I anticipated. Let's put it that way. Okay, well, since there wasn't any water in there, we didn't have to do much to that. And um, the only other thing I want to do is move this over there into the grass. So we might come up here and chisel this, rip this at some point, And not that we'll get super tight into this corner, but it might be a little in the way here. So uh, let's just move it into the grass out of the way. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. Leave that in manual because we don't want the hose to move. I want to go this way. Override. Is that it? Nope. It's thinking, doing something. It doesn't like that. Why doesn't it like that? No, that's not what we want. Stop. Okay, now this way. Ah, how do I do this? There. Now I'm sure somebody's gonna ask me about taking this thing home to put it in the barn for the winter. You guys, it's 60 feet wide. And yes, the booms do fold in, but even folded in, it's gonna be 20 feet wide. Close to it. It is 16 feet tall. And it moves a half a mile an hour. It's 0.43 miles per hour. It's not going home for the winter. Um, it would it would not fit across the bridge that we've got between here and home, the straight shot. So it would have to go around the section. It would be a one, two, three, four, five, close to a six mile move. It would take me three hours to drive it there. And that doesn't take into the fact that it is 16 feet tall and will hit a bunch of electric lines on the way. Uh, not feasible, not possible to get it home uh, and put it in the barn. It is designed to live in the field like a pivot, and so it will stay here. Um, Dad has thrown out the idea of building a little shed here to park the thing in over winter. It might happen. It clearly isn't going to happen before this winter. So it is what it is. Um, it's designed for it, and it will be fine. Uh, you can't, can't put it on a trailer and haul it because of the height, and we can't make it any shorter without taking the hose off, and we're not taking the hose off. So that's what it is, and that's where it's going to sit for the winter. 
Um, somebody asked about wind, if I'm worried about it blowing over. I'm really not. It's, I, it wasn't something that ever occurred to me, but no, I'm, I'm not concerned about that machine blowing over in the wind. All right, well, apparently I was a little worried about that water in that pipe for nothing. I did notice a fair good um, breeze blowing through you know, where I had that air fitting there and the other end of the pipe is open. I've got it propped up on the, um, the, the post that we've got in there, um, bollard post there. So it's the wind is kind of blowing through the pipe. I don't know if it's, I must have blown most of the water out to start with and then um, maybe it's, it's evaporating some out or dried it out as the wind's blowing through it. I don't know. I don't think we're gonna have any issues. It shouldn't be a problem. It seemed to be pretty dry. Um, you know, I, had, I know I had that, that hose at the bottom of the pipe, and there, when I pulled it out, it wasn't wet anywhere. It was totally dry, so I guess we're good. All right, well, let's work on this. Before we get started, though, have you guys got your Borderview Farms merch yet? Got this really nice hoodie. It's getting cold out. It's very nice. It's super comfy. Fits really well. I like it a lot. I also have my... my hold on. My NRX shirt, sorry, my best RX shirt. You got one of these? Best RX, doesn't come from a doctor. RX tractor, do you get it? It's funny. Anyway, um, if you guys need any of that stuff, you know anybody that might like some of Christmas gifts, head on over to farmfocused.com uh, or go to borderviewfarms.com and click on the, the link and it will get you to my page directly. Um, starting today, we have a early bird special and by today I mean tomorrow when this video is posting so I think tomorrow's the 20th is that right yeah and I'm supposed to have a discount code for you but I haven't even given it to me yet because it doesn't start until tomorrow but it's today for you guys yeah so anyway um, check the social medias I'll try and remember to post in the description of this video what the uh, discount code is but you should be able to get a 20% off discount early bird or early pre-black Friday something I don't know it's a good sale it's a good deal so um, take advantage of that, and I'm waiting on the rest of my details to come in. You know, like I said, the code and whatever else, uh, how long it lasts. I'm not sure how long it goes. I know it starts tomorrow, probably until Black Friday, or maybe it goes through. I don't know. I'll look at the details. But anyway, um, yeah, so you can get your stuff 20% off now. It's a really good deal, and I appreciate it. Thank you. So the best way I've found to do this is to kind of start in the middle here and actually thread it above that truss until we get enough hanging here to make it to our end wall. And then we drive over there. I think I got room down here. Ooh, that was close. We're okay. Out there, that side's good. Now we stuff that up in there and then we start stapling. There's the first part. Now we back her up. We're using a lot of staples. Ugh, duck underneath that. Now, instead of trying to staple this up as we go here, it's better to uh, go down to the next truss. and thread what's left through that one. Then we just got a little tail hanging over there. Okay, I gotta, I gotta learn how to drive here. We're going all crooked. Okay, there's bay two. And I went out far enough to, the, to my garage door track there. Now we have to work around that, which is a little trickier than anything we had over there, but it is what it is. My pile of stuff's gonna be in the way here pretty quick. I think I can get this one more from where we're at without having to move that. I don't really wanna to have to move that, but we're gonna to have to anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Do I finish all the way to the end or do I go work on the other side? Or keep going that way? I could do whatever I want. We're gonna do this one first. Whew, it's hot up here. I hate to take my sweatshirt off because then the fiberglass gets all over my arms instead of just the Sweatshirt, which it is now covered in, but uh, yeah, I'm sweating.
it looks so much easier in the time lapse. Like this isn't hard. It's not no big deal. Gosh dang, this is a lot of work. Uh, all right. Well, there's three more. There's, there's three more bays in that ceiling, but the bottom one is a narrow one, and we've got to put our board on the side to attach the steel to the J channel to and stuff. So we're not going to put the insulation in that one. So two more to finish this run out. And that one, did I talk about that one that I left out there? Yeah, I talked about it this morning because it's got the conduit. So we're going to leave that one out till we pull that conduit out of there. Yeah. Close. Well, I kept running into stuff on the ground. I'm going to have to move a bunch more stuff to get that last one. And I'm tired. Plus, it's after five, so we're going to call it good enough here. We'll find something else to work out in the house, I think. Well, I guess I'm going home. So... Thanks for watching today. If uh, you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. Tomorrow doesn't look like a good day. It looks like a cold, windy, rainy day. It might not rain till later in the afternoon, but it's a um, uh, cold front moving through. It's supposed to get pretty windy in the afternoon. I was thinking maybe I could spread fertilizer, but we'd have to do it in the morning before it starts raining, before it gets windy, and I don't know if it's going to be dry enough to do that. Um, but I would like to get that fertilizer em tender or spreader empty so that we could get it cleaned up and put away and start working on some of this equipment. We also need to get the power washer taken to Berkey and clean up some equipment down there that's sitting outside. But if it's crappy and rainy and windy, tomorrow's not a good day to do that. So uh, we'll see. We'll see what we got going on. We'll probably be working in the uh, seed warehouse some more. We might um, do some seed business stuff. I got a couple of guys that I had talked to last week that sent me orders today. So that was good. Got some stuff uh, ordered and that stuff placed. And uh, what else we got going on tomorrow? I don't know. I don't know. But we'll get there. Have a good night. Have a good night. Great night. Good night. Whatever you want. We'll see you in the morning.